Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 16th episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers titled Switching Places. And oh boy are things about to get weird. We start this episode in the creepiest way possible. Squat is in Billy's garage at night and he's rewiring a big machine that Billy has created. I think Rita and her troop are just hoping that this thing sparks and blows in the kingdom come, and that's pretty disturbing. We cut to Billy and Kim in the garage later, and Billy explains that the machine is meant so that he can read her mind while she can read his. Kimberly really stutters out the made-up word more phenomenal, while Bulk and Skull are for some reason just creeping outside of Billy's garage. Billy and Kimberly get into the machine, and before Bulk and Skull can see what happens, they're attacked by an off-screen dog noise. Billy flips the switch, and dun dun dun, he and Kimberly have actually they switch bodies. Oh no! They scream at the camera in a slow zoom out and it's great. Meanwhile, on the moon, Goldar announces that someone in their gang found a lamp from a distant planet. Yeah. The monster this week is a genie. Babu and Squat rub the lamp and the genie is unleashed. Raise those stakes, everyone. Hulk and Skull resume their sociopathic tendency by sneaking into Billy's garage and jumping into the machine. After a brief joke about how Skull is going to be thinking about Kimberly, they activate the switch, and yeah, they're switch bodies too. And someone just put this episode out of its misery already. Now we get the meat and potatoes of this episode, and it's fucking delicious. Billy as Kim is struggling to put on makeup while being made fun of by popular girls. He's also still wearing his glasses in a different body, but like whatever, it's a nice gag. He goes to cooking class because he's a woman, and he roars royally messed up a cheese souffle which expands and blows up all over everyone. It's okay, Kim as Billy is doing just as well as a computer science tutor and somehow she makes an entire computer explode. We now get the best scene so far in the history of this show. Jason, Trini, and Zach find out about the body switch because Kimberly and Billy are screaming at each other in the hallway. Kimberly blames Billy for not knowing what he was doing with his invention and Billy tries to explain that he can fix it if she just shuts the fuck up. They're not under a spell. They have no idea it's Rita's fault. They just act like complete assholes because of course you would. We cut to Bulk and Skull who are now dressed as each other while eating at the youth center. Okay, I want to hate this episode, but the role of Russell is so well done. Good thing they picked the four most solid actors for the story, seriously. Baboon Squad gets sent down to Earth with the magic lamp because apparently the lamp keeps the genie hidden from Zordon sensors, which makes no sense because wouldn't he sense Babu and Squat? Oh well, Squat rubs the lamp and frees the genie. Take that plot. The rangers are made aware of the genie by Zordon, and they get to the park where Zack retrieves the magic lamp. They teleport to the command center, where Zordon warns them that the genie is gone and needs to be destroyed for some reason. They morph, and there's a nice putty fight and Goldar fight here too. Zordon lets them know that the putties are distractions, and like, no shit, they've never been the master plan here, dude. The genie shows up and starts throwing spears at the rangers for some reason. Don't worry, before anything can happen, the rangers are teleported back to the command center. Hope you weren't getting too attached. At the command center, Zordon pretty much just tells them that they suck and they need to stop sucking. Great advice. Thanks, man. Anyways, the rangers are back in the park, posing their asses off, while Rita shows up and fires a fireball at the genie and it makes him grow. I'm just as confused as you are. They call out their Zords, and honestly, I forgot Billy and Kimberly had switched bodies until there's a gag where Kimberly, as the Blue Ranger, lands in a Triceratops, and she's confused about who she is. Seriously, what the hell was the point of this whole plot? They bring them together to form the Megazord, which effectively gets his shit pushed in, and moments before the Megazord gets a fucking drill to the face, Alpha somehow destroys the magic lamp, evaporating the genie. So, like, Alpha just straight up remotely murdered a magic being, and, um, Billy and Kimberly and Bulk and Skull are definitely still switched. Oh well, back to Billy's garage. Billy has made all the repairs, and ta-da, Billy and Kimberly are switched back to normal. Don't go too quickly, because we haven't forgotten about Bulk and Skull. They show up asking to be switched back, and Billy asks the other rangers if he should. What the fuck, Billy? Like, I get that they're dicks, but, like, you can't just let them be in each other's bodies for the rest of their lives. Of course, Billy switches them back to normal, and we end on the gag of Skull asking Billy if he can borrow his mind for an upcoming test. Huh. So, parts of this episode need to be taken out back and shot. Other parts are so incredible. Amy Jo Johnson and David Yost really shine in this episode as their counterparts at characters, and so do Jason Narvi and Paul Schreier. Seriously, I almost wish Kimberly had been the team nerd while Billy was a shallow bro. That would have been so much more interesting of a dynamic between the original five. Then Trini is motherly and all-inclusive by being close with Kimberly while everyone is waiting for Billy's secret heart of gold to come out. Oh well. That being said, don't get used to just having five rangers anymore starting next week. It's a moment we've all been waiting for slash dreading, but until then, may the power protect you.